did you know? The original Mortal Kombat was developed by a team of just four people. Mortal Kombat's co-creator Ed Boon stated, The first Mortal Kombat game was four guys, literally. One programmer, myself, two graphics guys, and a sound guy was the entire team. Mortal Kombat started as something very different altogether. The game's creators Ed Boon and John Tobias were approached to create a game adaptation of the 1992 movie Universal Soldier, which would star Jean-Claude Van Damme. The game was planned to use digitized visuals of the film's cast and was pitched as a more serious and hard-edged take on the genre. The digitized visuals and gritty tone of Universal Soldier carried over into what would become a huge fighting franchise, but the movie adaptation deal fell through. This was apparently because of of Van Damme's very busy work schedule, but Boone and Tobias decided to continue development anyway. One of the series' most well-known characters, Johnny Cage, was a spoof on the whole Van Damme situation, and even used Van Damme's likeness from the movie Bloodsport. Mortal Kombat was developed in just eight months, and according to Boone, the game was nameless for about six of those eight months, as no one could come up with a name that other members of the team didn't hate. The names included Kumite, Dragon Attack, Death Blow, and even Fatality, after the game's trademark finishing move. Someone had written Combat on the drawing board for potential names in Boone's office, and there was a letter K written over the C. A pinball designer named Steve Ritchie was sitting in Boone's office. He saw the word Combat on the board and said to Boone, Why don't you name it Mortal Kombat? According to Mortal Kombat's developers, fatalities, which are the game's finishing moves, came from the idea of rubbing your victory in your opponent's face at the end of a match. They were originally only going to be performed by the game's end boss, Shang Tsung, but it was decided to let the player execute them as well. These violent finishers were well received by gamers, however they weren't well received by the gaming public and politicians. The fatality scene in Mortal Kombat caused an outcry by parents, and this outcry was actually the main reason the ESRB rating system was ever created. The developers responded to this publicity when they were making Mortal Kombat 2 by creating another type of finishing move called Friendships. Friendships displayed an act of kindness at the end of a fight instead of a gruesome death, poking fun at all the negative attention and public outcry surrounding their game. Other finishing moves were eventually added as well. Babalities turned your opponent into a baby. It came about when the sound effect programmer, Dan Forden, who is also the toasty guy, found some baby cries in sound effect CDs. He thought the idea of a babality finisher would be funny, so the developers created baby baby sprites for every single character in the game. Another type of finishing move, Animalities, actually started off as a fan rumor. The rumor was that the character Scorpion could transform into an actual Scorpion as a special kind of fatality, exclusive only to him. This wasn't true at the time, but the team were aware of the rumor and decided to incorporate Animalities into Mortal Kombat 3. It's possible that this rumor was initially sparked by Liu Kang's fatality in Mortal Kombat 2, where he turned into a dragon. Animalities were dropped altogether when the series went 3D, as having two separate 3D models models morph into each other would be pretty complicated and hard to execute for all the characters in the game. Fan rumors actually led to the addition of multiple characters in the Mortal Kombat series. In some arcade builds of the original Mortal Kombat, the word Ermax can be seen in the test menu under Game Audits. Because the listing was directly under the listing for Reptile Battles, Reptile being a hidden character in the game, some players speculated that there was another hidden character in the game called Ermac. A reader of Electronic Gaming Monthly named Tony Casey reported he had found Ermac in the game by defeating his friend twice flawlessly using only punches at the Warrior Shrine, after Red Ninja had appeared and told him, I will fight you near the statues. Ermac supposedly appeared on screen and said, I am Ermac, you will never defeat me. Casey supplied photo evidence of Ermac's existence, who appeared to be a ninja-like scorpion, but was colored red instead of yellow. The developers denied Ermac's existence by putting messages in Mortal Kombat 2. Jade would occasionally appear on screen and say, Ermac who? There was also a garbled message at the bottom of the screen after beating the game. When unscrambled, it said, Ermac does not exist. The developers later denied Ermac's existence outright, explaining that Ermac's in the audits menu simply stood for error macros, and no palette for a red ninja was programmed into the game. Ermac was eventually added as a playable character in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat's creators later referenced the whole affair in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, where a fight with Ermac will be triggered if the player inspects the ninja statue at the Warrior Shrine three times. Rumors surfaced again after Mortal Kombat 2's release, claiming a red-clad woman, a recolored katana, 
could be found somewhere in the game. Though no indication of a name for such a fighter was ever found, fans simply dubbed this woman Scarlet. No more details about Scarlet surfaced for years, and fans assumed that she was just made up, as her origins were very similar to Ermax. In September of 2010, Ed Boon suddenly posted an image on Twitter showing the leg of a red-clad female character for the upcoming Mortal Kombat game. Boon said that he'd release the full image of this mystery fighter if Shao Kahn beat Gears of War's General Ram in GameSpot.com's all-time greatest villain contest. But Shao Kahn lost, and Boon posted nothing more about the fighter. When gameplay videos for the new Mortal Kombat were published in March of 2011, a red-clad woman could be seen in the background of Khan's arena. Later that month, information was released about the game's downloadable characters. The red-clad woman's appearance was shown in full, but her name wasn't. Fans later hacked the game and found that, indeed, her name was Scarlet. The developers also had some fun with all the Mortal Kombat rumors by adding a few of their own. The character Kano appeared in the original Mortal Kombat, but not in the sequel. A rumor surfaced that Kano could be unlocked in Mortal Kombat 2 as a secret character by Shang Tsung's morphing ability. The rumor came from a statistic saying Kano transformations listed in the menu. The listing was added intentionally and was basically intended to replicate the Ermac rumor. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure to also check out DigiNoGaming.com where we post gaming trivia every single day. If you like this video, then check out our other videos. And if you'd like to see more Mortal Kombat related stuff and tons of reviews, let's plays, and cartoons, head on over to our channel, Two Best Friends Play, the hypest gameplay on YouTube.